Mark Rogers TV here to preview one of those all important Power Five conference matchups uh, with the college football playoffs looming in January. TCU taking on Minnesota, the first big game for both programs. We bring in uh, Jamie Plunkett of Frogs O War, the SB Nation platform for TCU football. Jamie, let's look at this matchup uh, with Minnesota coming off a nice eight and four campaign. TCU struggling last season at four and eight, the well documented close losses. Uh, your thoughts on scheduling these kind of games, this matchup in particular with uh, the Golden Gophers? Well, I think it's great. I think it does nothing but bring more credibility to your schedule at the end of the year to play other Power 5 teams, especially teams like Minnesota, who with Coach Jerry Kill and David Cobb at running back, they've really started to improve their program. Like you said, they were 8-4 and four last year. Um, so I think it's nothing but positive. Um, for TCU to schedule these kinds of games. I'd much rather see them play three games like this versus a game like Samford that they played two weeks ago where you really can't get a good feel for how the program's going to be. Um, so I'm looking forward to this game. TCU had an early bye week to prepare for this game, so it's it's ready. we're all ready for some more TCU football. I was on your site last night, Jamie, and uh, I, I loved what you guys had to say in titling this the Wacker Bowl. And if uh, people haven't been uh, followers of college football for a long time, Jim Wacker head coach uh, in the 80s and 90s at both TCU and Minnesota, so it kind of brought me back there. Uh, let's start at quarterback. Uh, that was a trouble spot last season, really for the last couple years at TCU. Uh, Trevon Boykin coming out with a strong game against Samford. Again, it was Samford, 320 yards passing. Uh, new offense for this football team. So your thoughts about Boykin's performance in game one and maybe some subtleties or maybe some not-so-subtleties that you saw in the offense in game one that we can expect for Minnesota? Well, starting with Boykin, uh, he looked more comfortable and more confident than I've seen him look uh, as the quarterback in this offense for the last two years. Um, other than probably the Baylor game in 2012 when in his first full week to prepare, he went down to Waco. Was, you know, seeing an offense against a team like Sanford, or Sanford, excuse me, um, you know, you can't get a whole lot out of it, but what we did see was that Trayvon Boykin uh, looked like he has gotten his passing accuracy under control. He was very accurate with the ball. He had some good uh, zip on it. He had looked like he's improved his arm strength. Uh, he was still mobile, but really I think what's working for him so far in this new offense is the simplicity of it. He um, has the ability to hand the ball off in most situations or take off and run. He makes one to two reads at the most. Uh, unless he's got um, an opportunity to throw a deep ball to Colby Listenby, which we saw several times last uh, or two weeks ago against Samford. Um, I think ultimately what we're going to see from him this year is kind of keep it simple, students to succeed, short passes, running plays, options, that kind of thing. And if that's the case, then he's going to be great. Um, the biggest thing to know about this new offense is, one, it has an identity. Doug Meacham and Sonny Cumbie have come in, and they have clearly explained to the guys on this offense what they're going to do, which is move fast. Regardless of whether that's through the air or on the ground, all they want is an up-tempo offense that gets on the ball and gets it snapped quickly. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing that puts pressure on opposing defenses this year is because they're not going to be used to TCU's offense running this quickly. It's going to look a lot more like Baylor, a lot more like Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. And, Jamie, based on our conversations in the offseason, I, I believe that you're pretty excited about the wide receiver core and some of the talent that's been brought in for, for this kind of offense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think we're finally seeing uh, hard work pay dividends for Colby Listenby. He's one of the fastest kids in the country, uh, and now we're seeing good route running, good hands, general awareness of where he is on the field, and all that's going to do is make him better and make him a deep ball threat every time he steps onto the field. Beyond him, you've got... Uh, it's like David Porter, Jawan Story, Josh Doxson, who are a little bit better in this faster offense with Elmore. Uh, and two guys to pay attention to, Ty Slanina. He's a sophomore this year who's played quite a bit as a true freshman last year. He had a pretty good game against Sanford. Look for him to be one of the top three or four receivers this year for TCU. And a true freshman, Emmanuel Porter. He saw a little bit of time in garbage time against Sanford, but he's huge and he's really fast. And so if he continues to improve, he could break. Uh, he could make his way into the two deep on wide receiver also. And Jamie, really in this game, two or three touchdowns might do it. Uh, Minnesota, for all the credit given for winning eight games, uh, only won four of those in the Big Ten last year, and it was really a pedestrian offense, and not much has changed 
Uh, Mitch Leitner, uh, we're not going to confuse him with one of the better quarterbacks, uh, more explosive quarterbacks in the country, but the kid did rush for seven touchdowns last year, and, and he does have experience. He's got an MCL issue. I don't know if you have any insight into whether he's going to play for sure, but his backup, uh, Chris Strevler, has one pass attempt in his career, so I think that has much to do with what this – has happened to this line, according to Vegas, going from like 11 or 12 out to 16, is the uncertainty of quarterback from Minnesota. They rely heavily on the run with Leidner or without him with uh, David Cobb, who's had two huge games coming out of the gate in 2014 after 1,200 yards last year. So don't know if you have a whole lot on Minnesota's offense, but looking at your defense, um, only the one game. Against despite some of the issues last year, uh, still has some exceptional playmakers on that side of the ball. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Mike Tuaua has stepped in nicely. He had a huge game against Samford. Um, Paul Dawson had another great game. He left. He looked a little winded and started having cramps um, in the second half of the game against Samford. Marcus Mallett led the team with 10 tackles in that game. This defense returned. Turn to nine starters, it's going to be stacking this year. Of course, when you lose a guy like Jason Brett, you have concerns at cornerback. Anthony Texada stepped in as a redshirt freshman in the first game and played incredibly well. He's the guy that actually tipped that pass that Paul Dawson picked up. Kevin White, Minnesota is a very one-dimensional offense. They can really only run the ball well, and that's not going to be good for them in this game. The 4-2-5 is designed to stop the run first before it stops the pass. And we saw that a lot last year because TCU had an incredible run defense. And we saw it a little bit in Samford's game as well. Um, now, the one thing that TCU did struggle with against Samford was quarterback running, which could be a problem regardless of who Minnesota has at quarterback to start. I think it's going to be Mitch Leidner. All signs are pointing that direction. All things coming out of Minnesota are saying that Leidner will start. Um, but regardless of whether it's him or his backup, they're both incredibly mobile. And we saw that Michael Eubanks, the Arizona State transfer that's at Samford now, burned TCU a little bit when he started to run. So I think what we're going to have to see is how does TCU respond when the quarterback starts to run the ball because that's going to dictate how well this defense does. Team's a pretty heavy favorite, as we mentioned, in 16 points. Um, so um, winning the football game may not uh, necessarily be enough in, in regards to what you would like to see out of this team going forward and competing in the Big 12. So so what are some of those things that you would like to see in this game that, that are going to make you feel a little bit better about uh, competing for a Big 12 title? Tempo on offense will be a huge one. Minnesota's defense will obviously be the best thing that we've seen so far this year. Uh, they are okay on defense. They gave up a lot of garbage time yardage against Middle Tennessee State and Eastern Illinois, which raises questions about depth for me, depth on defense, and when an offense is moving this quickly, you're going to have to sub guys in and out. Not to mention that they've lost five guys to ACL tears for the season already this year, which is an incredible amount of tradition, or not tradition, attrition. Um, so I think the biggest things that we need to look for to see how well this team's actually going to be is tempo on offense and how, is they, how do they respond to a one-dimensional offense defense. How do they respond when they know what the offense is going to do? How do they respond on defense when they know that Minnesota is going to run the ball, when they know that the quarterback's mobile? How do they respond when Gary Patterson is on them because they've given up 100 yards rushing? You know, after the game last week or two weeks ago against Stanford, Gary Patterson said in his press conference at half time that our total for the game, you're going to be practicing in pads tomorrow. And the defense came out and allowed four yards rushing in the second half. So I want to see that kind of motivation out of the gate tomorrow because if that's the case, then Minnesota really, in my biased opinion, doesn't stand much of a chance. Yeah, Jamie, thanks for sizing this thing up because this is the type matchup I love as well. I know that it's not huge on the radar nationally, but at the same time, yeah, it's two Power 5 conference uh, teams getting together, one that's coming off a down year, but we know should be much better, and then maybe a Minnesota team that really uh, maximized its resources and its personnel to win eight games last year and maybe may not be quite as good. And uh, I'm going to pick on one of your uh, Big 12 conference uh, colleagues there in Baylor to say, hey, you're a top 10 team from last season, you're projected top 15 or top 20, and you're not playing anybody 
Power Five out of conference. So, so this is just a good barometer, not only for TCU, but for the Big 12. And a weekend that's uh, pretty big for the Big 12. Uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts about the other matchups around the Big 12, but it's a big weekend for the Big 12 playing a lot of Power Five conference football. Um, Texas is playing UCLA up in Arlington this year, and they're really looking to rebound after a horrible outing against BYU at home. Um, you know, they are another team that's suffered a great amount of attrition this year already. Uh, David Ash is out for the season with concussion issues, and, you know, Charlie Strong is just kicking people off the team at, you know, a moment's notice, um, which is good, I think, in the long term for Texas football. Not so good for them this year. Um, you know, Baylor... They're going to do what they do. They're going to beat up on really, really small powder puff teams the first three weeks of the season. That doesn't tell me anything about them, but I do expect them to be incredible again this year. Um, and then Oklahoma, I think they will have uh, a pretty good outing against Tennessee. I, I'm, I'm not buying into Tennessee after two, after two mediocre wins. So I think Oklahoma is one of the top teams in the country. I think they'll take care of business. I think it will be an incredible weekend for the Big 12 overall. All right, then you've got a couple bonus games possibly. If, if Iowa State could pull off the stunner at Iowa, and it really wouldn't be a stunner because I don't think Iowa's a great team. And look at what Iowa State did against Kansas State and almost pulled off uh, an upset at home. So that's, that's always, even though Iowa's typically the much better program, uh, typically a, a tough game inside 10 points or a touchdown with that one. So maybe you steal a, a couple that uh, you're, you're not necessarily expected to win there. So, Jamie, we thank you for the information and the insight. Uh, TCU taking on Minnesota. So uh, hopefully we'll have you back at some point uh, down, uh, down the road. Sounds good, Mark. Look forward to it.